news that the diocese accepted the, the plan to privatize? Um, so, so someone had referred to it as uh, the breaking of a dam, um, and that, that is what it felt like. Um, it's, it's this incredible project that we've all been working and, and sweating over for quite some time. And, to know that we now have that, that one way to go, um, it's just it's exciting and rewarding and thrilling and all those things. It's fantastic. Yeah. So I know a big piece of that was the whole finance thing. You guys recently hit a million dollars towards your $2 million goal. Yeah. Uh, tell me a little bit about how the whole fundraising and getting uh, money has been going. Yeah, so it's been fantastic. Um, I mean, I think what's been tough about fundraising it, what we thought would be tough about fundraising was the notion that you know, we still couldn't guarantee people that we would be here. And so we had to kind of take this into a face with them and ask for their support without knowing for sure that we had an entity for them to support. Um, the fact that we still were able to raise a million dollars under those conditions is just, in my mind, that's just a testament to, to what we have here and the community that we have, but also the product that, that they know of that we're going to continue. So now, now that we know we have that green light, um, it, it just clears it clears this whole space ahead for what we can do, and, and the promise ahead is, is fantastic. So what are the, the next steps for the school? So the next steps of the school, um, I mean, we've got some logistical things to work out. We are still working on the memorandum of understanding with the diocese, which will, you know, that'll be an ongoing process. Um, hopefully a quick one, but but that'll go on. And then we're, we're working on basically squaring up all the nuts and bolts, you know, getting insurance. We're just talking about that. Um, and then continuing hard on the, on the fundraising and on enrolling new students. Um, we have a really strong curriculum model for next year, so that's all ready to roll out. We're still revisiting our athletics program um, and basically determining if we can add teams and, and if so, which ones, because we'll have the opportunity to co-op again with public schools and different sports. So um, so basically it's it's just, it's the beginning and yet just the continuation of, of all the work that we've done. It feels kind of like both at the same time. Yeah. So you mentioned enrollment. I know that's been a very big emphasis. How is that? process been going? Uh, what have people in the public been saying? Yeah, so it's it, the enrollment struggle is very similar to the, the fundraising struggle, where mm -hmm. you're you're asking people to basically sign on to this entity that you don't know yet exists. Um, and we certainly believed it would come to fruition, but, um, but we didn't have that proof yet. Um, so it, it, what we've experienced is, is pretty much akin to the same process in fundraising, where it's blown us away the amount of enthusiasm and energy and willingness of people to to take that leap of faith with us. Um, I think if anything, this announcement just opens that door even more for for anyone who was waiting in the wings and wasn't quite sure that they were ready to jump in because they didn't know for sure if we'd have it. Um, this is their opportunity now to, to get on board because now we know we've got that go ahead. Yeah, I know you guys have uh, had a lot of alumni support, especially financially, but also just. Uh morally there for yeah you. yeah uh, how does that felt as that's that? that's been the best part um i know we often talk about this community as if it's a family um mm -hmm. i know that's really hokey but um but that that is what this is and i think more than anything we have we have formed this this core alliance with alums with with staff with faculty with parents with students and we've all really banded together to, to make this happen. Um, we could not have done this without alumni, uh, particularly their involvement in the board of trustees, their involvement in the foundation, their involvement in the fundraising, and, and their involvement in basically all these instrumental parts of, that went into building this. Um, it, it, was, it was largely an alumni effort. Um, so you know we, we have the alumni to thank, um, and we also have our current families to thank, not only for sticking with us through a rough patch, um, but for all of their support and you know bringing new ideas to the table and you know just hanging in there with us. I, it's it's been it's been wonderful. So does uh, privatizing does that change anything for any students or families at all? Well, I, I certainly don't think it does in a, in a dramatic way. Mm -hmm. um, I think there will be some positive tweaks um, because, again, when, when you have central control, you know, over your own governance and over your own models of curriculum and development, it does give you the ability to adapt quicker to um, to feedback. Where basically we can figure out what's working for our families and we can jump on it quick. We don't have to run it through a central office and then swing it back. Um, so I, I think there will be some benefits to that. But in terms of the day-to-day -day life, no, it's it's largely stable. I mean, we have we have what we do well here, and we're going to continue to do that.
Um, I don't see any changes in any dramatic ways to that. I just see kind of these incremental improvements coming along as we go. Yeah. So the press release, it sort of mentioned that uh, they accepted the plan because of a, like a fiscally responsible yeah. uh, financing plan moving forward. Is there any, are there any specific goals that you guys have um, set in that plan? Yeah. So, I mean, the, the financial plan is really, it's, it's kind of this give and take between enrollment and fundraising, right? Um, the goal is to obviously break clean where we don't want to have any kind of, uh, you know, deficit behind us. Um, that, that's clearly not where we want to be. Um, but in order to get there, we need to bump enrollment. And in order to bump enrollment, we need to bump fundraising. And it's all this, this elaborate give and take. Um, so the five-year budget really just takes that into account. The fact that we, we expect and plan and have every reason to believe that we will hit these very conservative benchmarks of enrollment, which will then boost our, our revenue, which will then theoretically boost some of our fundraising so we can improve on the building and improve on the offerings and, and grow the school in a, in a really positive way. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, is there anything else that you'd like to add about uh, officially moving forward with becoming a private school? I think personally, I just I just want to thank the community, um, not only the St. Bernard's community, but the um, you know the entire Fitchburg community, the Leominster community has been tremendously supportive of us. Um, we've had a lot of support from local banks and businesses, and you know it's just it's it's been a, a team effort, um, and we are we're honored to be in Fitchburg. We, we very much look forward to the next 100 years in Fitchburg, so.